How do you write suspense? How do you leave the reader waiting in anticipation or even afraid about what is going to happen next? Here are three tips that will create so much suspense that your reader's heart will stop. Not literally, because that would kill them, but you know what I mean. But if you're new here and you love stories and storytelling and you want to write your own story, then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell and I'll keep you updated with future videos. So this is the foundation of suspense. This is how you create such a high level of suspense, it is to have a high level of the unknown. For example, leaving the reader guessing who is the murderer, what is in the haunted house, who will win in the end, create a high level of the unknown in a story and by doing that it keeps the reader reading and wanting to know what is going to happen next. But here are three points about how you can create such a high level of the unknown. Because creating the unknown and suspense are literally the same thing. If you create high levels of unknown in the story then it is the same as creating suspense. So how do you create high levels of unknown in the story? Here are three tips. The first one is to create a huge secret at the end of the book that you already know at the start when you start writing that you're going to reveal right at the end. Because of that you can create lots of little clues throughout the story and will hint at the plot twist and because of that you're building and you're constantly revealing just a little bit more about the story and a little bit more about what might happen in the future and it just leaves the reader guessing. Lee Child is a perfect example of someone who feeds the reader just enough information that they want to know just a little bit more. So they want to get to that climax and they absolutely know that there is a secret at the end of the novel. They absolutely know that there must be a huge secret that is not revealed to them at the start of the novel that will be revealed to them in stages. Perfect example is murder mystery novels because you absolutely know that there will be a secret at the end. There will be a plot twist about who actually killed the victim. It leaves you constantly in a battle in your head trying to work out who it could possibly be. It's like you're playing a game in your head. That is why quiz shows are actually also so suspenseful because you don't know the answer. You don't absolutely know the answer. You might be 99.9% .9 certain what the answer is, but you don't absolutely know. So if you can create a huge secret at the end that the reader knows will happen, then that creates a high level of suspense. The second tip is to create foreshadowing. This is very similar to the first tip because it involves leaving lots of different clues, but give the reader information that perhaps they don't understand the significance of. For example, showing the character an object early on in the story and the reader doesn't quite know the significance. They don't even know the that it's a clue really, but they just shown the object and because of that they might consider what could that object mean, what is the significance of the object, why has the writer felt that they should write a whole sentence describing an object that otherwise wouldn't really be very relevant to the story and so they're kind of left guessing what is the significance of that object. Foreshadowing is basically information that you give to the reader throughout the story that hints at a future event. For example you could create a scene where the protagonist walks into a room and everyone is kind of looking angry anxiously at each other, like they're scared or nervous about something, but the protagonist has no idea what it is and the reader has no idea what it is and you're trying to work it out with the protagonist. This scene again is so common in murder mystery novels or even in films like The Woman in Black where Arthur Kipps is walking through the village and he sees people staring at him in a very negative way as if they don't want him there and they don't want him there and they are very anxious and very nervous and scared and uptight about him being in the village and he has no idea why they don't want him to be there and the whole thing film and the whole story is about him trying to work out what is going on in the village and why they don't want him there and that is what creates such a high level of unknown because the protagonist and the audience has no idea what is going on in this village. It's such a secluded isolated village that nothing really enters in or comes out of the village and so it's very secretive and there's a lot of unknowns about it and that is what makes it suspenseful because you have no idea what is going on. Tip number three to create another level of unknown is to create a past event that is hidden from the reader that explains the mysterious occurrences in the present and the protagonist again is trying to find out clues and information about the past that will help to explain the present again in The Woman in Black because there's such a detailed past about the village and the woman and the house that she inhabits and that is what Arthur Kipps has to try and find out and to uncover the secrets that have been hidden for so long. All three tips are kind of the same point and that is to create a high level of the unknown where the reader just doesn't know what is going
going on. They simply don't know. It is secrets waiting to be revealed. You can do this in a very short scene where the protagonist doesn't know what is around the next corner. It is the kind of suspense that makes jump scenes so frightening. Or you can have long-term suspense where the reader is trying to work out what is going to happen throughout the whole book. But here is just a quick summary of the three tips about how to create a high level of the unknown. The first one is to think of a huge secret and throughout the story there are hints and clues that reveal what that secret might be. The second tip is to use foreshadowing either through objects or through the behaviours of people that also hint at future events. For example people being anxious or behaving in a strange way. Or tip number three, to use past events that are hidden from the reader that explain the mysterious occurrences in the present. So those are my three tips. If you enjoyed give it a like and comment what is your favourite suspense story of all time. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.